All right, local swole truckers, here it is. Tuesday, August 26th, we got partly sunny skies and light to moderate trade winds and a dying south swell, but a new one's coming. It's been an excellent run this summer for all shorelines. And let's start with a little hindcasting going back to last Monday, about just over a week ago. We have this low spinning clockwise here, way off of New Zealand, almost below French Polynesia here. And that is uh, sending us up the ways we're seeing and have seen. It reached up to four feet. Today it's one to three from this source, and it's fairly close to the islands, about 3,500 miles away, which a lot of swell production is way down here where you see this red blob. A lot of our swells come from over 4,000 miles away, typically southeast of New Zealand. So this one spinning a little closer, meaning less swell decay. Let's click in the animations and you can see what's coming. Okay, there, you see this? The jet stream is setting up a broad trough here to the east of New Zealand, starting off down here, but building. And this is going Wednesday the 20th, all right? So six days ago, this is what we saw. There's a high pressure going counterclockwise in the Tasman Sea. And in between the high pressure and the low, anytime you see them side by side, that really helps because the winds feed into each other and create a, a more stable predictable fetch and that's why we're going to see a long lasting event from this wide wide long fetch let's click in the animations you can see look at that setup this is gorgeous this will be leading to three to four feet at uh, oh 12 to 15 seconds from the south southwest we'll see the forerunners coming in later today with 16 18 seconds wednesday should be uh, two to three and by thursday we should be looking at some uh, three to four, two to four, and maybe even some five footers. And it's going to last through Saturday, thanks again to the length of this fetch. This is Thursday, and this is Friday, and this is Saturday. So take a look. We've got reinforcing fetches, ones way down to the south, and then this one that re strengthened to the south of us. And these will be feeding into each other and keeping us rippable all the way through the end of August in a minimum four foot category and mostly out of the south and south southwest angle. Starting up the, the rolls, we can see again it continues here and then not before we get another fetch down to the southeast there is a big whomping storm feeding up off of the Ross Ice Shelf and although they do point a lot of their energy to the east of us, we will be seeing some sideband swell and I will get to that. So what I wanted to point out is we are looking good well into September, kicking off next Tuesday, the September 2nd. We should be seeing some long period forerunners from this guy down here. I'll get to the current models shortly. All right, so here we are today. Now, the, the storm way down here by the Ross Ice Shelf does not look strong, but the Wave Watch 3 models are predicting this guy and then especially that guy with some 40-plus foot seas to, again, though it's tra traveling northeast, is big and powerful enough for plenty of sideband swell. Tahiti is just going to get huge from this guy. Now, this round of swell currently is being forecast to have some 20-plus second forerunners. Wednesday and Thursday, the 3rd and 4th, and even the 5th of September, could see some 3 to 5 footers from this guy. Now, the Wave Watch 3s are actually claiming bigger, 4 feet, 15, 16 seconds, and that'd be enough for much bigger. But I think the models are running hot, as they usually do with super long-range forecasts. Clicking in the animations to take a look at that beauty, and we even have some more. This will be passing us off even more to the east. But we, shall, we will see something from this guy, too. We won't make a claim on that, but it looks like the swell machine is running full gear far south below Tahiti, and September is going to be rocking and rolling. So let's go ahead and take a look. We will quiet down after that, but let's take one, a look. We have this one, two, and then three, and then four, all for September. Okay, starting up the animations. For the north pack and doing some hind casting going back a week ago, the 19th, we have a couple systems out here, a Lowell and Karina, and that's actually sending us some 12-second energy from the east today. Uh, Makapu'u ramped up from 1 to 2, now to 3, 12 seconds from these tropical systems here. We'll go ahead and run the models, and you can see there were pretty decent-sized storms, but nothing the size of Maria that is popping into your window now. That is a Category 5 hurricane as of yesterday, Monday, and she's going to be sending us in some rare 
14 to 17 second east swell starting Thursday, Friday. Now, this model goes back to Monday the 25th, just about eight days ago. We'll click in one more day, and you can see it's heading northwest before dissipating up here where the other two dissipated due to wind shear and cooler waters. This particular hurricane will stay far away from us, but not before bringing just ridiculous weather and surf to the entire Baja Peninsula. Now, bringing it to today's models, take a look at that. Those are some high winds and seas right there, and too close for comfort for Baja. Let's click it in, and you can see she's doing exactly what I said, which is heading northwest and dissipating. The north pack is trying to put out some stuff, but we're not likely to see anything except for east wall from these guys. This is Friday the 29th here. As she tries to meander up our way, we'll be seeing, watching the swell go from east to east-northeast, thanks to the track which fades out completely by this weekend. And as you can see, there really isn't any other swell source. It's all going to be down under. Okay, let's take a look at the large upper air currents known as the jet stream. And obviously, it's very quiet up here with no sources of regular ground swell. It's all coming from the tropics, from off Baja, as I was showing. We have two branches here for the south pack. We're going to be getting waves from the southern branch. That's where we usually get our swell from. And we'll go ahead and click it in. You can see a little bit of a tilt up here, pushing that one system up off the Ross Ice Shelf, as I was showing you. You can see a little bit of troppiness over the islands. I'll get to the weather here shortly. It's creating a little bit more haze, a little bit more rain. But down under, it's, it's zonal for a few days. And then we uh, have some nice tilts there. You can see right there. And that, again, enhances and steers uh, some nice size low pressures. And we'll be getting some quite a bit of sideband swell but the system's so large, and it's going to be south swell versus south-southwest. We go zonal again for a little while, but not before it tilts back up. It's a little bit further to the east out of our window, but we'll still see sideband swell thanks to the size of it. And then seven, eight days out, you can see the southern branch goes totally quiet. So this next run of, what is it, like a handful of sources, which is incredible when you think about it. We'll take a breather here from about September 10th on. Okay, let's head over to the hand-drawn chart. Here comes Maria over here, and we have Karina and Lowell sending us some swell right now. Here we are down here at about 20 degrees, and a couple pairs of high pressures up here, keeping us in a trade wind pattern. Some troughiness over here, creating a little bit of that weather. And I'll show you that in a second. These are the sur what's happening at the surface. So the high pressures keep uh, keep the trade winds from getting out of here, but because of the, of the frontal boundary right in between them, we will see the high pressures weaken and the trades drop Thursday, Friday, Saturday into a possible sea breeze regime for a couple days right as these swells are here. So it's going to be epic for all eastern and adjacent shorelines. In other words, from the northeast to the southeast, from Kahuku to Sandy Beach. These are the water vapor loops showing features over 20,000 feet up. But it's a beautiful view here of Maria spinning counterclockwise in the tropics, of course. And there's that upper level spinner here pulling up some moisture uh, from the southeast. And a little bit more weather, that is moving off to the west, and so weather should improve over the next couple days, Wednesday, Thursday. The brown is showing the dry sinking air this, from the high pressures, and there is the scenario in the upper regions. We'll drill down. You can see an east-northeasterly flow to the trade winds, and it is quite cloudy. Maria sneaking into view over here. A little bit of cloud cover from that upper level low off to the northwest of Kauai. Highs are going to be near 90, super hot and muggy. Lows about 75, 76. Uh, you can really see the northeast tilt to the winds. Drilling down a little bit further, we're still doing pretty good. The loop's showing the rain, and there is quite a bit spilling over to the off to the south of us when most of it is confined to the windward and Malka areas and upstream. But this is definitely more moisture than we're used to seeing. And we'll finish up here with one last look at this Really cool animation of showing the winds. You can see the trades heading in from the northeast here, hitting Hawaii Nay. Here comes Maria over here, spinning off some of that long period east swell for Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And we can start to see some fetches coming up off Ross Ice Shelf here. You can see that counterclockwise spinning high pressure here in the Taz. And there is your local swell tracker. Thanks for being here. We'll check you back here about the same time next week. Mahalo. Aloha.